Hi again, this is Andy, KE4GKP. Welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 24 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we're going to cover the T7B questions and common transmitter and receiver problems. All right, the T7B section goes over symptoms of overload and overdrive, distortion, interference, over and under modulation, RF feedback, off frequency signals, fading and noise, and problems with digital communication interfaces. All right, let's get going. What can you do if you are told your FM handheld or mobile transceiver is over deviating? All right, what you can do is talk farther away from the microphone. So drastic changes in volume when your voice is right near the microphone can play havoc on producing a clean RF signal, especially on FM. And you don't need to talk right next with the mic right next to your mouth. You can try holding it back about 18 inches away, and that should solve the problem. What would cause a broadcast AM or FM radio to receive an amateur radio transmission unintentionally? The answer is the receiver is unable to reject strong signals outside the AM or FM band. So the receiver, it, most receivers will basically produce the audio for whatever frequency they're tuned to. And However, if a broadcast AM or FM radio receiver is exposed to a very strong amateur radio transmission, Sometimes the strength of that transmission may overwhelm that receiver's selectivity and then that AM or FM broadcast radio will start to produce audio for that amateur transmission. So if the signal is strong enough, it does not even have to be the same band that that AM or FM radio is tuned to to overload the receiver and start producing audio. So what would cause a broadcast AM or FM radio to receive an amateur radio transmission unintentionally? The receiver is unable to reject strong signals outside the AM or FM band. Which of the following may be a cause of radio frequency interference? All right, now this is one of those all of the above type questions. So there are lots of things that can cause RF interference. It's a very general term. Harmonics can cause RF interference. Fundamental overload can cause RF interference. Spurious emissions can cause RF interference. So all of the above can cause RF interference. Which of the following is a way to reduce or eliminate interference by an amateur transmitter to a nearby telephone? The answer is put an RF filter on the telephone. Now, of the possible answers, putting an RF filter on the phone will reduce the or eliminate interference from a transmitter. So in general, when you need to stop the interference, the best way to do that is with an RF filter on the device being interfered with. In this case, that would be the telephone. If you put a filter on the transmitter, that's not going to do any good, and you're not going to be able to transmit probably anyway. So it, the answer makes the most sense is the RF filter. So which of the following is a way to reduce or eliminate interference by an amateur transmitter to a nearby telephone? The answer is to put an RF filter on the telephone. How can overload of a non-amateur radio or TV receiver by an amateur signal be reduced or eliminated? The answer is block the amateur signal with a filter at the antenna input of the effective receiver. So it's kind of the same idea of the previous question. What you need to do is you need to find the affected um, broad, uh, AM, FM broadcast radio or the TV receiver and put a, a filter on the antenna which will filter out the amateur signal that's interfering with the TV or the radio. So it's kind of the same idea as the previous question. So the goal is to block the interference with a filter on the antenna with the device being interfered with. So how can overload of a non-amateur radio or TV receiver by an amateur signal be reduced or eliminated? Block the amateur signal with a filter at the antenna input of the effective receiver. Which of the following actions should you take if a neighbor tells you that your station's transmissions are interfering with their radio or TV reception? The answer is to make sure that your station is functioning properly and that it does not cause interference to your own television. So essentially, the first thing you always want to check is make sure you, your station is working right and it's not producing spurious um, emissions, it's not, well, all the soldering connections to the antenna and to your coax, everything's good and solid and that you're not producing any sparks anywhere. So if your equipment is functioning properly, go check your TV and if when you transmit your TV gets interfered with, you probably need to start installing filters around the place. However, you need to make sure that you have a good ground, your station is in good working order, and that you test on your TV before you start complaining back at your neighbor. So which of the following actions should you take if your neighbor tells you that your station's transmissions are interfering with their radio or TV reception? Make sure your station is, is functioning properly and that it does not cause interference to your own television. 
Which of the following may be useful in correcting a radio frequency interference problem? Snap-on ferrite chokes, low-pass and high-pass filters, and band reject and band pass filters may be useful. And I would say all of the above are useful. What should you do if something in a neighbor's home is causing harmful interference to your amateur station? This is going to be an all of the above answer on the exam, but to help you basically come to that conclusion, all you have to do is remember that ham radio operators are friendly. And once you realize that, all the, the remaining answers are friendly. So first, you're going to politely help your neighbor identify the offending device. The next thing you're going to do is going to be politely inform your neighbor that if he or she can't stop the device from causing interference, they have to stop using the device. And third, you need to make sure that you're operating correctly and the problem isn't part of your equipment or that your antenna is lying on their gutter and that's why you're getting interference every time they open or close their garage door. So this is an all above the question and just remember that amateur radio operators are friendly and polite. What is a Part 15 device? So a Part 15 device is an unlicensed device that may emit low-powered radio signals on frequencies used by a licensed service. Um, a Part 15 device is anything that produces a radio signal but does not require a license to operate. So your, garage, your automatic garage door opener produces a radio signal. It's a Part 15 device. Um, some TV controls are Part 15 devices. Your microwave might be a Part 15 device. So these type of things, um, uh, wireless microphones are part 15 devices. So anything that produces a low powered radio signal that you do not need a license to operate is generally a part 15 device. What might be the problem if you receive a report that your audio signal through a repeater is distorted or unintelligible? Well, there are a lot of factors that could cause this and there are also a lot of all the above answers in this section for some reason. Well, your transmitter could be slightly off frequency and needs to be adjusted, that's one. Two, your batteries could be low. Or three, you could just be in a bad location and the re repeater can't pick you up very well. So just remember there are multiple answers to this question on the exam. What is a symptom of RF feedback in a transmitter or transceiver? All right, a symptom of this is reports of garbled, distorted, or unintelligible transmission. And if you're starting to get this, uh, you probably should just pull out the owner's manual and do the, the troubleshooting checklist in the back. It could be a bunch of things, but um, the owner's manual should help you out. What might be the first step to resolve cable TV interference from your ham radio transmission? The answer is to be sure all TV coaxial connectors are installed properly. So the other possible answers on this one is uh, installing filters and going basically above and beyond to solve to block out the interference. But remember, the first step in determining the problem is making sure that your equipment and the equipment being interfered with is operating correctly. And for this series of possible answers, the first basically check to make sure the equipment is good is to make sure all the TV coaxial connectors are installed properly. So a loose connector can cause all sorts of problems. It causes sparks and it can actually generate additional RF to what the, what's being produced. So whenever possible, the first step is to check the connections and check the equipment. So what might be the first step to resolve cable TV interference from your ham radio transmission? Be sure all TV coaxial connectors are installed properly. Now the review is over and now it's time for the T7B quiz. So take out a pencil and paper number 1 through 12. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick so if you need more time just pause the video and take all the time you need. And when you're done be sure to stop by hamwhisper.com and check your answers. You'll find them under the exam answers page under the T7B quiz link. And with that, let's start with the quiz. Question 1. What can you do if you are told your FM handheld or mobile transceiver is over-deviating? A. Talk louder into the microphone. B. Let the transceiver cool off. C. Change it to a higher power level. Or D. Talk farther away from the microphone. Question 2. What would cause a broadcast AM or FM radio to receive an amateur radio transmission unintentionally? A. The receiver is unable to reject strong signals outside the AM or FM band. B. The microphone gain on the transmitter is turned up too high. C. The audio amplifier of the transmitter is overloaded. Or D. The deviation of an amateur transmitter is set too low. Question 3. Which of the following may be a cause of radio frequency interference? A. Fundamental overload. B. Harmonics. C. Spurious emissions. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 4. Which of the following is a way to reduce or eliminate interference by an amateur transmitter to a nearby telephone? 
A. Put a filter on the amateur transmitter. B. Reduce the microphone gain. C. Reduce the SWR in the transmitter transmission line. Or D. Put an RF filter on the telephone. Question 5. How can overload of a non-amateur radio or TV receiver by an amateur signal be reduced or eliminated? A. Block the amateur signal with a filter at the antenna input of the affected receiver. B. Block the interfering signal with a filter on the amateur transmitter. C. Switch the transmitter from FM to single sideband. Or D. Switch the transmitter to a narrow band mode. Question 6. Which of the following actions should you take if a neighbor tells you that your station's transmissions are interfering with their radio or TV reception? A. Make sure that your station is functioning properly and that it does not cause interference to your own radio or television when it is turned to the same channel. B. Immediately turn off your transmitter and contact the nearest FCC office for assistance. C. Tell them that your license gives you the right to transmit and nothing can be done to reduce the interference. Or D. Install a harmonic doubler on your output of your transmitter and tune it until the interference is eliminated. Question 7. Which of the following may be useful in correcting a radio frequency interference problem? A. Snap on ferrite chokes. B. Low pass and high pass filters. C. Band reject and band pass filters. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 8. What should you do if something in a neighbor's home is causing harmful interference to your amateur station? A. Work with your neighbor to identify the offending device. B. Politely inform your neighbor about the rules that prohibit the use of devices which cause interference. C. Check your station and make sure it meets standards of good amateur practice. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 9. What is a Part 15 device? A. An unlicensed device that may emit low-powered radio signals on frequencies used by a licensed service. B. A type of amateur radio that can legally be used in the citizen's band. C. A device for long-distance communications using special codes sanctioned by the International Amateur Radio Union. Or D. A type of test set used to determine whether a transmitter is in compliance with FCC Regulation 91.15. Question 10. What might be the problem if you receive a report that your audio signal through the repeater is distorted or unintelligible? A. Your transmitter may be slightly off frequency. B. Your batteries may be running low. C. You could be in a bad location. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 11. What is a symptom of RF feedback in a transmitter or transceiver? A. Excessive SWR at the antenna connection. B. The transmitter will not stay on the desired frequency. C. Reports of garbled, distorted, or unintelligible transmissions or D, frequent blowing of power supply fuses. And question 12. What might be the first step to resolve cable TV interference from your ham radio transmission? A, add a low pass filter to the TV antenna input. B, add a high pass filter to the TV antenna input. C, add a preamplifier to the TV antenna input. Or D, be sure all TV coaxial connectors are installed properly. And that concludes lesson 24 and the T7B questions. So, now that you're done with the quiz, be sure to stop by hamwhisper.com and check your answers. And until next time in Lesson 25, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.